welcome to Everyday Living with Penny. My name is Penny Malone and today we are going to be making a spiral sliced ham with log cabin maple syrup and we're going to be making my grandmother's cornbread dressing of the easy cheesy corn and made from scratch banana pudding and I'll have my first guest today. Her name is Marianne Gray and she is from Chicago. All right for our ham um, all you do is take it out of the package uh, put it in a, whatever you're going to put it in the oven for. You want to preheat your oven to 325 degrees. Uh, this ham is a Food City spiral sliced ham and it has the honey glaze with it. Um, the only thing that I do is put all the juices and everything in with it. You're going to take your um, log cabin maple syrup and you're going to pull your slices apart and just start drizzling this in. Depending on how sweet you want it, you can use either a half or a whole can. Also depends on your size of your, your pork. I usually use the whole, whole bottle. This is a 10 pound, almost 11 pound pan. You want to cover it in tin full. You don't want to burn the top. This ham is pre-cooked, so um, the directions just follow the directions for your whatever ham you buy. It's 10 to 12 minutes per pound. And like I said, this is an 11 pound ham, so it's gonna be in there about an hour and 50 minutes. Next, we're gonna be making my grandmother's homemade cornbread dressing. This has been a family tradition for as long as I can remember, and it's absolutely the best cornbread dressing I've ever had in my life. Um, you want to start with some cornbread. Uh, you can add biscuits and crackers. Uh, right now, I'm just doing cornbread. You just crumble it up into big chunks. In your dish that you're going to serve it in. Doesn't have to be pretty. Okay. Right, then we're going to go over to the stove. In the saucepan, you're going to put about um, a cup and a half to two cups, depending on the size of the dressing that you're wanting to make. Um, I put about two cups because I have a pretty big pan of dressing. So you're going to have your chicken broth. And you're going to put in about a half a stick of butter. Let that get to boiling. A little salt and pepper. When your chicken broth starts to get hot, go ahead and put your, you're gonna dice some onions and celery. Just go ahead and drop those in. And bring it to a bowl. Thank you. 
Let this mixture boil for three or four minutes. Cook up your vegetables. After you've got your chicken broth mixture good and hot, let it boil for two or three minutes, you're going to want to put uh, sage on the top of your cornbread. Grandmother uses dried sage that she gets out of her garden. I didn't have any at this time, so I had to use the store-bought store brand. Just sprinkle some. on top. Of course this is to your taste. Some people like sage, some people don't. So, You take and pour your mixture over top and stir it up real good. If you don't have enough breading you can use biscuits or um, light bread or crackers. You want to leave it a little juicy. Unless you like really dry bread then, or dry dressing, then you can. And you can add more salt and pepper if you need to. Again, it's all to taste. And it's best served hot, so. And there it is, my grandmother's cornbread dressing. The next thing that we're going to be making is called uh, cheesy cream corn. This recipe was first found on allrecipes.com by Tina Carter. And she made it for one of our work functions and we, of course, everybody wanted to make this recipe so we passed it around. Um, but now I have changed it. I think hers, the original recipe called for three bags of frozen corn. I'm cutting it down to just one bag of frozen corn. So you take your frozen corn, put it in your pot. You want to add just a little bit of sugar, maybe a tablespoon or so, and about two tablespoons of milk. This is just roundabout. Okay, you're going to take some cream cheese. take about a quarter of it. Drop it down in there. And a piece of just plain American sliced cheese. I'm gonna chunk it up. And And then you're going to put it on the stove by. I 
All right, I'm also gonna add about um, a third of a cup of water in the bottom of this. You just keep stirring it until everything melts together and it's bubbling. Sorry, we're gonna have to wait again. Also adding a half a stick of butter. Once all of your cream cheese and cheese and butter, and everything is melted together, let it boil for just a little bit. Make sure you've warmed your, car or your corn all the way through. Should look something like this. Egan Construction in Gate City is a fully licensed electrical, industrial, commercial, and residential contractor whose services include maintenance on home or corporate offices, custom-designed kitchen renovations, demolitions, insurance restorations due to water dryouts, wind damage, or fire, licensed interior designing and architectural drawings, full excavations. They're licensed in Virginia and Tennessee. That's Egan Construction, 345 Water Street in Gate City. Today for the dessert portion, I have my Aunt Mary. She is from Chicago, uh, originally from Fort Blackmore. She's gonna be making um, homemade, made from scratch banana pudding for you. Thank you, Penny, for having me today. You're welcome. And I would like to uh, start off with uh, uh, the ingredients. is bananas and the vanilla wafers, sugar, and milk, and flour for your thickening, and vanilla, and the eggs. So first of all, we're going to start off with the milk. And that's, um, I'm making a double portion today, so this is six cups of milk and the sugar is uh, three uh, yes two and a half cups and I want to stir that and get it just to melt And this would have to go on, on the stove to bring the milk up to a lukewarm stage. So just to get the uh, sugar kind of melted and Just for about four. Just for yeah, for a couple of minutes just to get that sugar started melting. It's a cup of milk. Yes. Just take a cup of milk and put it in with the eggs. 
so that you'll be able to beat them with the flour. So I am putting uh, five tablespoons of flour in here to, to thicken it. So and you want to beat it up <clears throat> to where it will be nice and smooth and no, hopefully no lumps in your pudding, okay? recipe has been in my family for about 75 years and when I come to Virginia I get the request to make this so in this I just made it yesterday for a cookout by my uncle's house I'm not my uncle I'm sorry my nephew and um, it was all gone there was not I think my brother Charles I think he licked the bowl <laughs> Probably did. It's very, very good. So we got that beat up now. And um, we're going to add it to the uh, milk and sugar mixture. It's going to take a while for it to, to boil. Now I want this. Okay, we're back today with our making our banana pudding. So I want to add uh, half a stick of butter. So I've already added some. So, and then also um, my vanilla, and that's uh, four t four teaspoons because this is a double batch. So. stirred up in it. So I'm going to do this button that you can wipe it off. So I'm just use the knife in. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go and pour my pudding mix in on the uh, what I already started the layer. So you can cut up your bananas and Put them in on top of a layer of the, the wafers. So we're going to go ahead and add another layer of the vanilla wafers and a layer of the bananas. be perfect just you know just put them in there and they'll taste good later
next we're gonna gonna finish finish uh, pouring the pudding over the over the vanilla wafers and the bananas. So. Leave us some to lick too. <laughs> it's good to the last drop. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Just kind of move some of that pudding around so we'll go down to the bottom and get mixed in with all the other wafers and the bananas. You could also, if you would like, you could put Cool Whip or do the um, egg whites, which a lot of people don't like the egg whites. Meringue. So, the meringue, yes. And uh, so there we are. Thank you. Thank you, Penny, for You're having welcome. me. Thank you for being here. Uh, it was a pleasure. Thank you for joining me today on Everyday Living with Penny. I've uh, had fun with my Aunt Mary. I don't get to see her very often, but when I do, I always enjoy the time we get to spend together, especially if it's in the kitchen cooking, because you know, it's always good. So, <laughs> um, I have a few things here, a few tips to uh, tell you before we actually close the show today. Um, for a wall cleaner, a combined half cup of ammonia, a fourth of a cup of white vinegar, fourth a cup of washing soda, and one gallon of warm water. Um, and when you're washing your walls, always begin washing walls from the bottom and uh, wash, wash upwards. Uh, why? If dirty water runs down over the soiled area, it leaves streaks that are hard to remove. Sometimes they won't come out at all. Uh, for window cleaner, I have a half a cup of ammonia, a half a cup of white distilled vinegar, and two tablespoons of cornstarch. You add this to a bucket of warm water and it's a perfect window washing solution. For the fast cleanups, wash with a, close, a cloth soaked in white vinegar and dry with a crumpled newspaper. Again, thank you for joining me today. I've, I hope to see you soon. For the recipes for today's show, you can go to everydaylivingwithpenny.tumblr.com.